The girl is girding herself. Even if she can't hardly breathe, she still has to tell the maid to tighten the belt again. The girls are all dressed up for London's annual social season and to find a good husband. Carriages pull up in front of the castle. The ladies were ready to go. Today is their day to meet the queen. With the queen's approval, they'll have a significant presence in the highly competitive dating market. But if the queen frowns and shakes her head and waves her hand three times, girls will even faint when they see the queen's reaction like this. This also means that the girl in the marriage market will be in jeopardy. And henceforth worthless, Daphne was the most in your girl in town. Daphne was escorted up the hall by her mother, Lady Bridgerton. The crowd looked at her with grave eyes, but she remained graceful at all times and eventually won the queen's favor. The queen said Daphne was flawless. Daphne stood out from the 200 girls and the news spread quickly throughout London. She would be the center of attention as the best girl of the season. By the evening ball, Daphne was still glowing just as she had hoped. The eyes of all the young men were on her. All eyes were on the Bridgerton family. Mom told Daphne to wait for someone to come to her instead of taking the initiative. Brother Anthony was the head of the family. His main responsibility tonight is to help Daphne filter out the less than stellar suitors. He needs to consider the man's family, his character and many other aspects and make sure Daphne marries a good husband. And tonight at the ball, the Duke of Bassett was also in the spotlight. The Duke is the highest rank of the British nobility. Such a handsome and rich aristocrat is certainly loved by many girls. If girls talk to him, it means they have a better chance of being elected Duchess. Daphne was running away from her suitor when she accidentally ran into the Duke's arms. Oh, pardon me. Daphne saw that the suitor hadn't been shaken off, so she started talking to the man in front of her. Tell me your name. Am I honestly to believe you do not already know my name? Bassett said that her trying to get to know him in this way showed that it wasn't the best way to strike up a conversation. Daphne was baffled and wanted to say that he had misunderstood the whole thing. But then her brother came rushing over. Bridgerton! Come here, old friend! I heard news of your father. It turns out that Bassett and Anthony are old friends, so they've been alumni since they were in London. After the three of them got to know each other briefly, Anthony took Daphne away because the brother knew very well that Bassett was an unmarriageable womanizer, so his sister should not have too much interaction with him. After this night of fun and games, Daphne was expecting to be visited by many suitors the next day, but that was not to be. In 19th century England, ladies were struggling to marry a good husband. She was the queen's chosen one. Flawless, my dear. Daphne got up early in the morning to get dressed and waited for her admirers to come to her door. But it was another country girl that the gentleman visited with flowers and gifts. Daphne was more aloof and unapproachable then. Marina was found to be more beautiful and sweet. Marina's room was surrounded by gentlemen. Daphne's side was empty. She waited for half a day for Burbrook who was over 30 years old. Burbrook had come earlier because he thought Daphne already had someone she liked, but he now felt that he and Daphne were destined for each other. Daphne is very upset about the outcome. She says that if her brother had turned her suitors away, then she wouldn't be unmarried today. You have no idea what it is to be a woman. If I am unable to find a husband, I should be worthless. Anthony looked into Burbrook's family background. Burbrook not only inherited a title that had been in his family for over 200 years, he was also well-educated. Anthony thought Burbrook would be a good choice for her husband, but Daphne couldn't accept it. She said she would never marry Burbrook. Daphne goes into the woods to vent her anger, but then Burbrook comes along with her. He expresses his love for Daphne. He can't control his desire to have Daphne. A passing duke heard the commotion and came running over, only to see Daphne punch Burbrook with a fierce blow. The duke is impressed by Daphne's bravery. They both stay away from the crowd to escape their troubles. The duke looked at Daphne and suddenly thought of a solution to their dilemma, that they could pretend to be in love with each other. This would mean that the duke would find the duchess and he would have peace. No one would bother him anymore. And with the duke's favor, Daphne would be more interesting than ever for men. After all, the Duke can't go wrong with a woman he likes. And so Daphne and Bassett returned to the ball. Hand in hand, in full view of the crowd, the couple instantly became the center of attention. Can such a perfect couple wait for the day they really fall in love with each other? What is it like to be the most popular girl in London? She got all the attention as soon as she came out. The doors were jammed with cars and horses. Gentlemen got down on one knee with flowers and gifts to present to Daphne. All they wanted was for her to smile. Ever since Daphne and the Duke of Bassett made their agreement, they walk hand in hand on Monday, Wednesday and Friday, Tuesdays, Thursdays, 
Saturdays they would dance. The man can't take their eyes off Daphne for a second. Daphne held out her hand for the Duke to fasten her cufflinks in front of the crowd. Daphne still achieved her goal. The line of suitors to her house was as long as the next street. She gets to pick which lucky one will be her husband. But then Burberg, whom she had previously abandoned, finds her. He won't give up based on his deal with Daphne's brother. Burberg has unilaterally applied for a marriage license with Daphne. He said that if Daphne didn't say yes, then he would tell the truth about that night and ruin Daphne's reputation. In those days, a girl's reputation was even more important than her life. Even Daphne herself thought she would have to marry Burbrook for the rest of her life. Mother didn't want her daughter, who was about to become a duchess, to be ruined. So she decided to take the lead. First, she invited Burbrook's mother to her home. Then she asked her maid to spy on the Burbrook family's gossip. The help here is everything, as we all know. This poking around did bring her a lot of success. Burbrook not only had an illegitimate child, but also kick out his lover and child. The gossip spread like a virus until everyone knew about it. Burbrook was scorned and scorned by the public and was removed from Daphne's husband list. Daphne was back on the dating market as a single woman. Daphne's attitude has changed after this incident. She no longer lives to be seen in a different light. Instead, she is really thinking about her life and her future. She wants to marry the man she loves and spend her life with him, but she didn't know how adamant the Duke of Bassett was about not marrying. On the day of his birth, his mother died in childbirth, but his father ignored his wife and son and ran off to announce to the crowd. I have a son, the next Duke of Hastings. Bassett could not speak at the age of four. His father felt that such a fool was not worthy to inherit his title. He is an idiot. The Hastings name cannot land in the quivering hands of a halfwit. His father sent him away but his mother's best friend, Lady Danbury, kept him. She took good care of him and taught him to speak. Bassett returns to his father again, but he stammered again because he was nervous. He is again humiliated by his father. The lack of fatherly love since childhood made Bassett hate these things. It was not until his father's death that he returned home again, but this time he made a vow to his father, who was dying. I will never marry. I will never sign an heir to Hastings' line. Die with me. Bassett said he would never marry and never have children. He would let the family bloodline die with him. At this moment, Daphne does not know how determined the man she has grown to love is. The girl is dressed in a luxurious dress, gently waving a white feather fan, lifting the skirt slowly down the stairs. As soon as she appeared, she was the center of attention. The prince was even amazed at her. He came forward to invite Daphne to dance the first dance of the night. Then she dropped the feather fan in her hand inadvertently. The crowd was talking about something when they saw this scene. The prince immediately leaned down to pick up the fan. He was on one knee as if he was proposing. The gentlemen were overwhelmed by her charm. The girls were also impressed by her way of seducing men. When Daphne first met the prince, the prince complimented her on her exquisite dress. <laughs> The reason Daphne was so upset was that the Duke of Bassett had just told her. The first thing the prince said to everyone was, your dress is exquisite. Daphne offended the queen by laughing and squealing. But the prince didn't mind and fell in love with her at first sight. When the two of them next met at the art gallery, the prince got rid of his many suitors and just wanted to talk to Daphne. But Daphne is now looking for the Duke of Bassett. She briefly exchanged pleasantries with the prince and then saw the Duke of Bassett. Then she immediately said goodbye to the prince and left. She and the Duke of Bassett were standing in front of the same painting. Daphne was attracted by the serenity of the picture in front of her. Then they exaggerated masterpieces of others. She preferred this comforting work. The Duke of Bassett was touched by it because it was not only his favorite painting, but also his mother's favorite. In a delicate atmosphere, their hands came closer and touched each other directly. But just as their hands were clasped together, they were interrupted by a commotion outside. It turned out that a young lady had fainted and was waiting for the prince to take care of her. Bassett suggests that they learn the skill of fainting in the future. The sparks of love between the Duke of Bassett and Daphne are seen by Lady Danbury. But the Duke of Bassett is slow to act. Lady Danbury is getting anxious. She asks him if he's a big jerk who fools with other people's affection. If you are merely dallying with her, and if she loses her chance of such an extraordinary man, we're just being cruel. Lady Danbury's words 
put the Duke of Bassett in a state of contemplation, although his feelings for Daphne exceeded the boundaries of friendship. But the vows he had made before his father's death made him hesitate. When Daphne found him again the next day, he said that he would never accompany Daphne to an event again from this day forward. He'll never do that tomorrow or ever again. He didn't want to prevent Daphne from choosing a good husband to marry. The Duke of Bassett had to opt out. He was firm and even wished Daphne and the prince happiness. This hurt Daphne very much. She agrees to the prince's invitation to the ball. She even put on her most gorgeous dress. Daphne and the prince made eye contact and talked intimately. All this was seen by the Duke of Bassett, but he could not do anything at the moment. Except watch them laughing, the prince himself put on a magnificent diamond necklace for his wife to be. Daphne had beaten all the celebrities in town to win the prince's favor. She was about to marry into the royal family. Before the ball, Daphne put on the necklace given by the prince. Mom came in and asked her if she liked it. Daphne just says it's beautiful, but her mother wanted her to find out if she really liked it. Daphne hesitated and didn't know how to answer the question. She had spent the last few days thinking about it over and over again. She knew it was a beautiful, precious necklace, so it was only right that she should like it. She got herself together and went to the ball. Daphne was still the center of attention. During the dance, the prince said he had something to say to her. Daphne realizes that the prince is probably going to ask her to marry him. She looked at the prince in front of her and looks at the Duke of Bassett, who is not far away. Her emotional wavering makes her interrupt the prince's words. I need a moment to refresh myself, your highness. Daphne escaped from the party and went into the garden to catch her breath. She removes the heavy necklace from her neck. At that moment, the Duke of Bassett follows her out. He was ready to leave London. He's come to say goodbye to Daphne tonight. Daphne didn't want to hear him talk, let alone apologize. Instead, she turns and runs deeper into the garden. The Duke of Bassett chased after her because he was worried about her and urged Daphne to get back to the party. Listen. At that moment, no words can beat a lover who looks at each other with affection. The two of them could not help but kiss each other. But Daphne's brother saw this scene. You will marry her. I cannot marry her. Anthony was furious when he heard this, since the Duke of Bassett had made such a choice. Then he had to deal with the scandal of the day with a gentleman's duel and save Daphne's reputation. But Daphne doesn't understand why Bassett is doing this. Would Bassett rather die than marry Daphne? Bassett just says he's really sorry. The two of them meet at the dawn of the duel to save Daphne's reputation. Either Anthony or Duke Bassett dies today. But the moment that to raise their guns, Daphne rode in on horseback. She had to find out the real reason why Duke Bassett have rejected her. After all, if he doesn't marry her, her life will be ruined. She doesn't understand why Bassett would subject her to humiliation and condemnation. Bassett, however, says that it is because he cherishes her too much that he cannot marry her. The vows he made in front of his father kept him from having children. But Daphne's dream is to become a mother. The Duke of Bassett doesn't want Daphne to live an incomplete life because of his vows. But at this moment, Daphne has made a choice. The Duke and I are to be married. Everyone looked at Bassett in shock at those words. What preparations need to be made for the Duchess wedding? First select the finest fabrics and customize a valuable wedding dress. Even her nightgown had to be customized in five different styles. But these five nightgowns were not for Daphne, but for her husband. After all, the honeymoon needs the help of these luxury things. The dessert arrangement at the wedding was also quite elaborate. The frosting for dessert must be as white as snowflakes. Roses for the bouquet. Lilies were used for decoration. The servants prepare the Duke's wedding in an orderly manner. But at the moment Daphne was in a panic, she impatiently asked if she could get a special certificate to get married, preferably during her week. Mom senses something strange in her words. She then learns of Daphne's affair with the Duke of Bassett. To keep the scandal from spreading, Daphne had to get married right away. Although the Duke of Bassett was forced to get engaged and spend his days drinking away his sorrows, but he came to the church with Anthony and asked for a special permission to marry. But the bishop did not go along with their wish. The Duke of Bassett's special request for marriage was rejected by the bishop. Lady Damry analyzed the situation and guessed that the queen must have interfered in the matter. After all, Daphne had refused the prince's proposal. This made the queen lose face. Now the only solution was to make the queen regain her dignity. So the two of them came before the queen and pleaded for the queen's blessing on the grounds that they were true lovers. Daphne expressed her apologies to the prince and her love for the Duke of Bassett. She says that it was love at first sight with the Duke of Bassett. It was not, your majesty. 
The Duke of Bassa reveals the real truth. The two of them had previously made a pretend love agreement. From then on, they attended parties together every day and acted together. Then the two of them gradually developed a connection based on this relationship. As it used to be a man who didn't like to talk, Daphne brought him a lot of happiness and joy. He was sorry he didn't realize he wanted to be a wife with Daphne instead of a friend until the prince came along. The sincerity of the Duke of Bassett's words touched the queen. She should not have tried to stop this beautiful love for her own selfish reasons. Daphne finally put on her white wedding dress and walked to the Duke of Bassett's side. Daphne is now officially the Duchess of Hastings, but she didn't know that the first problem of becoming the Duchess of Bassett. On her wedding night, her husband wanted to sleep in a separate room from her. How grand was the wedding of the century for a duchess? There was a five-tier cake, exquisite desserts, and spicy crawfish, and a wonderful combination of high-class orchestral music. Daphne had no idea that after such an exquisite wedding, on their way night, the Duke of Bassett wanted to sleep in a separate room from her. I requested a separate room. Yes. The two of them were left speechless. One turned away, the other closed the door. Daphne kept pacing around the room. She thought back to the day at the wedding, when she hadn't had any chance to talk to Duke Bassett. She couldn't accept that she would spend her wedding night alone. The Duke of Bassett was also restless in his room. Since his last awkward engagement to Daphne, they hadn't had an honest conversation. Daphne mustered up the courage to turn and open the door. The Duke of Bassett also appeared before her at that moment. Daphne finally relents and says everything she's been thinking. She had always thought that Duke Bassett had avoided seeing her for three days because he hated her. Bassett looks up and firmly says that Daphne is mistaken. He walks back and forth nervously, saying that he's not talking to Daphne, so he won't say the wrong thing. Duke Bassett is actually torn at this point because he was not destined to give Daphne a complete family. Bassett heard Daphne's cries and said that he couldn't stop thinking about her. I am yours, Daphne. I have always been yours. Daphne doesn't understand what he means by that. Bassett, on the other hand, gets anxious and says he doesn't know how to explain it all. Why do you think I followed you into that garden? Why do you think I went into that garden? Only at this moment did they understand each other's feelings, and there was nothing to stop them from moving towards each other. Daphne was finally married to the Duke. Her siblings all went out to see her off. She said a solemn goodbye to her sister, for in the next social season, her sister would take over as the most glamorous girl in town. Although the two sisters had many differences, but they both had one thing in common. The certainty that you will make your own way in this world. I'm sure of it, Eloise. In the end, Daphne and her mother hugged each other goodbye. Mom tells Daphne with certainty that Daphne will be a wonderful duchess. Daphne walks to the carriage for the long journey. From this day forward, she no longer belongs to the Bridgerton family, but is named Lady Duke of Hastings. She takes one last look at the home she grew up in before the carriage. And then Daphne, with Bassett's help, stepped into the carriage to leave home and started a new life. But is the life of a duchess really as splendid as we imagine? How honorable and prestigious is the duchess? The carriage pulled into the large estate. The servants stood in line to the side to welcome them. Daphne slowly steps out of the carriage with help and looks at the large estate that will soon be hers. The Duke of Bassett held her hand as she walked up the stairs and was greeted by a salute from the servants. Bassett then eagerly picks her up and takes her on a tour of the large, luxurious bedrooms. Daphne had been taught by her mother not to neglect the ducal housekeeper, so she had to ignore Duke Bassett first. Daphne gets dressed. The housekeeper's wife took her on a tour of the castle. First they came to a very elegant room where they could have tea and chat with visitors. Then they came to a room full of history. Daphne had an idea for the room just by looking at it. Then they passed by the portrait of the former duchess. Daphne said she was beautiful. The housekeeper said she was the most elegant and perfect duchess. The look in the housekeeper's eyes clearly showed that she was not very happy with Daphne. They finished the tour of the estate and it was already dark. Daphne Saturday at the table waiting for the Bassett to arrive. My apologies, I... Are we expecting royalty? The Duke of Bassett feels inexplicably seated. At this moment, there was a distance of a hundred thousand miles between him and Daphne. He couldn't stand this kind of dining etiquette. He was sitting so far away from Daphne that he could hardly speak to her. Daphne happily said that the solution to this problem was simple. Then Daphne immediately got up, grabbed the wine glass and played in front of her and Saturday down next to the Duke of Bassett. The servants were stunned by this scene. The butler was so angry that he left, but this was their home, so of course they were in charge of everything. The newlyweds are living a very sweet life. Daphne didn't expect Bassett to be so physically active, 
Even though it's said he wouldn't have children, Duke Bassett and his wife came to the village to visit the villagers' market. As the owners of the village, they were loved by the villagers. Then a crying child came into Daphne's sight. She took the girl into her arms and gently coaxed her. The Duke of Bassett still felt guilty for his wife at the sight of this scene. On their way back, Daphne saw what was on Duke Bassett's mind. She reassured him that he didn't need to feel guilty about it. They were both satisfied with the happiness of their life together. But if Daphne learns that Duke Bassett can't give her a child, not because he's impotent, but because he doesn't want to have a child, would they still be so sweet and happy? The Duchess couldn't give away a single bouquet of flowers with a basket in hand. Daphne, who yesterday was a beloved Duchess, but today no one cares about her. The reason she was left out was because of a pig. Yesterday at that fair, Daphne learned that the winning pig would be slaughtered. So she announced, <clears throat> That all three pigs have tied. She hoped that none of the pigs would be slaughtered, but she didn't know that the winner would receive an order to sell a year's worth of pork to the estate. Her rash decision caused a great loss to the villagers. Daphne listened to the kind man's explanation and then it dawned on her. She immediately corrected her mistake and bought some additional cows. She finally regained the love of the villagers. She knew that she had a lot of work to do to be a good duchess. So she went to ask the housekeeper's wife for advice. But she accidentally learned about the former duchess' misfortune from the housekeeper. Daphne, who has no knowledge of childbirth, learns that the Duke of Bassett is not barren. She also finally understands the meaning of those sudden departures. Daphne could not accept the deceitfulness of the Duke of Bassett. She confronted him directly. She trusts him more than anyone, but he has been lying to her. Told you I cannot give you children. Cannot and will not are two entirely different things. No matter how Duke Bassett explained it, Daphne is angry and even unable to forgive Duke Bassett for his deception. The sweet newlyweds were in cold for mode at dinner. They no longer ate close to each other, but Saturday at opposite ends of the table, they had to rely on the servants to deliver the message when they were right across the table, just when they were about to fall into a deadlock of quarrel again. A letter from Bridgerton's family was handed to them. Daphne reads it and immediately tells the servant to pack her bags. Her family was embroiled in a scandal. She had to go back immediately. I will accompany you. This is a family matter. Separate bedrooms may be tolerated. Separate households will not be suffered. Daphne, feeling a little bitter, asks the servants to prepare the largest carriage for the Duke because she wants to have her own space to stay. The conflict between husband and wife is still unresolved. Daphne will face even greater challenges as a duchess. The girl is being girded again, then slowly makes her entrance in a bright gown. But her aim is not to find a good husband, but to find a suitable father for the child in her belly. Marina wakes up, and there is still no blood on the quilt. The servants saw this and immediately reported it. The aunt learned that Marina's period was already a month late. Aunt confronted her and realized that Marina was two months pregnant. Aunt immediately finds a 60-year-old man to match with Marina. Marina doesn't understand. Not long ago, she was visited by many suitors. But why is she now staring at a 60-year-old man? Her aunt said that even if someone was willing to marry her tomorrow, Marina can't have a healthy baby in six or seven months. But now the old man is still short of an heir. So she is to marry Marina off right away. The reputation of the remaining girls in the family is also at stake. Not wanting to settle for anything less, Marina decides to find a backup man. She has a ride on Daphne's third brother Colin. She thinks Colin is funny, kind and good at dancing. So Colin will be a good father. At Daphne's wedding of the century, Marina is ready to go on the offensive. She said she was dizzy and wanted to go out. So she asked Colin where there were fewer people. Colin led Marina away from the wedding and into a quiet study. Marina slowly approached Colin step by step. Then she lifted her head and closed her eyes. A man and a woman alone in a room together. But Colin restrained his desire. He wanted to protect Marina's reputation as a lady. He had to protect himself, no matter how great the temptation. At this point Marina was smiling, but in reality she was already cursing. However, just as she was about to leave. Then marry me. He nervously asks Marina if she will marry him. Marina rushes up and says she would love to marry him. Colin is a hopeless romantic. Marina has found a new husband. The two of them soon made their announcement to the public. I have happy news to impart. I have asked Miss Marina Thompson to be my wife and she has accepted. Marina's aunt's family was very happy. The baby in Marina's belly finally found a father. But Colleen's family was shocked. They didn't know the news at all. But in front of everyone, 
they could only congratulate the happy couple. Marina thought everything had come full circle, but the truth will out. Overnight, the news of Marina's pregnancy spreads all over town. They both fall into the center of public opinion. Daphne, the Duchess, returns home to settle the family scandal. The woman slowly walked down the stairs and shook her belly. She was now for months pregnant. She found a father for the baby without the man's knowledge. But by this time, the scandal had been revealed. Daphne, as the Duchess, arranges a meeting between the two protagonists to clear the air. Marina is sorry for what she did wrong, but there is no help for her. She has no choice and has to get married in order for the baby to have a good future. Colin is the only man who gives her a glimpse of happiness and hope. Colin cannot choose to forgive Marina for her deception. He says goodbye for the last time to the woman he once loved. Daphne felt bitter when she saw this helpless but strong woman. After Marina left, she went back to Marina to apologize because she could understand why Marina had to do what she did. Marina wasn't the only one who didn't want things to turn out this way. Marina looks into Daphne's sincere eyes and confesses her secret. Marina's baby's real father, George, was a soldier, but George had gone to the front a month after meeting her. She had also written to George to tell him she was pregnant, but she never heard back from him. She was desperate but had to think about the future of her child. This is what she had to do. Daphne realizes that she, as a duchess, may be able to help Marina find George. Marina says that George doesn't want to be with her. Daphne gets angry and says he can't decide Marina's future. He is the one who did wrong and Marina should not have to suffer the consequences of all this alone. Daphne also promises to help Marina. How happy are the women in high society? Do you think their husbands never come home to cause them pain? The noble women gambled every day without a care in the world. It is quite the ideal situation. I am afforded all the freedoms of marriage while bearing none of the burden of his company. In Bridgerton, the high society wives had a weekly party. They never talked about their husbands when they drank and chatted, and they wanted to stay away from men's troubles. Daphne also found the general's wife here and asked her to find George's address. Then Daphne sent a letter to George in the name of the Duchess. Shortly afterwards, things finally took a new turn, but unfortunately, George was killed in the war. This time it was George's brother who came to visit Marina. It was only then that Marina learned that George had written that he loved Marina. He wanted to run away with Marina and get married and have children. There is nothing sadder than not being able to love. George's brother was willing to take responsibility for George. He wanted to help George take care of his children and Marina. Marina finally has a place to turn to. See Marina's heart ache for love and her courage and strength for her child. Daphne thinks of herself and Bassett. The two of them were still in a cold war. She went back to the old house and dug through the closet to find letters Bassett had written to his father when he was a child. The letters were sincere but unopened. After talking to Lady Danbury, Daphne finally realized how much Bassett had suffered because of his father. She also understood the importance of Bassett's vows. The next day at breakfast, she began to break the ice. Daphne said she wanted to go back home today and asked Bassett if he would go with her to see her family. If he didn't go, maybe her family would think it was strange. Daphne returned home and reunited with her sisters. Bassett was also humble enough to answer her little sister's questions. Everyone was laughing and having a good time. Daphne was warmed by the sight. Soon after, the Duke and Lay's party arrives. Guests were coming in, but Bassett and Daphne are standing on their own. That's when Lady Danbury came to Bassett's side. Pride it will cost you everything and leave you with nothing. You must not allow it to happen to you too. Daphne's mother came to her side. Mom says she and Daphne's dad have faced a lot of hardships. Two, they now choose to love each other every day. She tells Daphne that it's never too late to make a choice. It's time for the dance. Daphne and Bassett slowly walk towards each other. They begin to dance slowly in front of the crowd. But soon after, it started to rain. Everyone ran for shelter under the roof. Daphne was more interested in enjoying the moment of rain when someone else wanted to join in the romance of the rain. Lady Danbury proudly announced that the ball was over for the night. Then she asked everyone to leave the house immediately. Daphne and Bassett were finally alone and they finally stopped hurting each other. You can choose to love me as much as I love you. Bassett had spent the entire night thinking about only one thing. Matty didn't want to be alone anymore. He didn't know how to be the man Daphne needed and deserved before. Daphne said they could get through this together if he would stay. Their two episode long cold war is finally over. The problems between the two of them are finally resolved. Bassett finally overcomes the psychological barrier 
and gives Daphne a full and happy family. They may still encounter various conflicts in their future lives, but they chose to overcome and face the difficulties together. The ladies of the aristocracy are being dressed for London's annual social season to find a good husband. All the blue bloods and ladies are competing today for an audience, with the queen and her approval. Whoever becomes the diamond lady chosen by the queen will be the most sought after girl in the dating market. In the first season of the series, the diamond lady is Daphne, the eldest daughter of the Bridgerton family, who is happily married to the handsome and wealthy duke. Her older brother Anthony, who is still single, will also be solving his marital problems in the second season. As the eldest son, Anthony is responsible for the honor of the entire Bridgerton family, so he wants to find an impeccable marriage partner, so Anthony collects all the marriageable girls in town and arranges to meet them one by one. But at the end of each meeting, he ruthlessly scratched out the names of the noble ladies. These girls were either not good-looking or not well-mannered enough. Obviously, they were not Anthony's true love. Anthony was riding his horse early in the morning when a woman in a cloak galloped past him. Her valiant back attracted Anthony's attention. He immediately spurred on his horse and chased after her. The girl notices that someone is following her, and her desire to win is aroused. And so the two of them began a race, seeing a patch of grass in front of them. Anthony worried about the girl's safety and warned her. The next moment, she pulls on the reins and steers her horse over the obstacle. Anthony was once again amazed by her horsemanship. The girl also took off her cloak to reveal her pretty face. Anthony gave her a gentlemanly nod, but the girl just smiled and turned away. She didn't want to talk to strangers because she was afraid of being caught riding alone. After all, it wasn't ladylike behavior for high society. Kate and her sister, Edwina, have just arrived in London with their mother and are boarding at the home of their friend, Lady Danbury, for the annual social season. Exceptional posture, beautiful smiles. Lady Danbury is very pleased with the young lady's qualifications. However, she is concerned that at 26, Kate is a little too old to be married and will have some difficulty in finding the right man for her. But Kate laughed and said the purpose of her visit was to find a good man for her gorgeous sister. So at the first ball of the social season, Lady Danbury brought the sisters to the Queen in the hope of impressing her so that they could be chosen as the Diamond Lady. The influential Bridgerton family also arrive at the ball. In order to help her eldest son, Anthony, find a wife, Mrs. Bridgerton deliberately and loudly states that Viscount Anthony intends to marry this year. As soon as she said this, the ladies of the aristocracy flocked to them. Kate, who was not far from them, recognized at once who Anthony was, surrounded by women. Viscount Bridgerton is wealthy, well-connected, and from one of the town's most illustrious families. He's very handsome. Yes. I suppose he is. As Edwina received a gentleman's invitation to dance and left, Kate went outside to get some fresh air. She was surprised to see Anthony chatting with his cronies about his choice of spouse and his attitude to marriage. Anthony said that he didn't expect love, but only a wife who would support him and take care of the children and be gentle enough to deserve the title of Viscountess. Kate was disappointed by this statement. However, just as she was about to leave, she accidentally made a noise and was spotted by Anthony. And then he quickly recognized the woman on horseback he met this morning, so he tried to ask her her name. Kate, however, was very disappointed in him for what he just said. I take issue with any man who views women merely as chattels and breeding. Anthony tried to argue that it didn't mean it, but Kate cut him off. I find your opinion of yourself entirely too high. Your character is as deficient as your horsemanship. I shall bid you good night. The queen slowly lifted the girl's chin and named her this season's diamond lady. And she immediately became the target of competition from all the gentlemen in the room. Handsome, wealthy Viscount Anthony got the first chance to dance with the diamond lady. After a brief conversation, Edwina's mindset and culture matched Anthony's criteria for a wife. It took him one dance to decide that Edwina was his ideal wife. Just when love was growing between them, Edwina's sister suddenly appeared and took her away. You are not to go near that man, do you understand? Her sister Kate and Anthony became enemies after only two meetings. Knowing that Anthony only wants a virtuous wife, Kate doesn't want her sister to waste her feelings on such a man. And since Edwina was crowned this season's diamond lady, she was inundated with suitors. But the gentleman who met her had to be screened by her sister Kate. After rigorous background checks, Kate shortlisted the men who would meet Edwina. The finalists came to the door with flowers and gifts. The confident Anthony was still dressing up, but by the time he arrived, the queue was miles long and Kate had no problem turning him away. Anthony wants to make an appointment for tomorrow or the next day, but Kate says she's fully booked for the near future. If I think of it, she may be free. Oh. After December. Unless, of course, she is on her honeymoon by then. 
Key was determined to stop Anthony from courting her sister, but Anthony wasn't giving up that easily. The following day at the Royal Ascot, Kate had already arranged a date for her sister, and Anthony was late again. There was no room for him in the gallery. The man stood up to greet Anthony. Kate, as usual, is not pleased with him. Edwina, however, looked at Anthony with affection, seeing that Edwina didn't reject him. Anthony played a trick. He said that in such a hot outdoor environment, a gentleman should prepare drinks for the ladies. Her partner was so anxious that he had to get up to buy a drink. Then Anthony easily sat her down next to Edwina. He initiated a conversation with her and had a great time. By the time her partner returned with the drinks, he was an uninvolved outsider. But once again, Anthony's opportunistic behavior upset Kate. When the game was over, Kate took Edwina away with her, ignoring the fact that Edwina was having a nice chat with Anthony. Kate's attitude was so harsh that Edwina was forced to leave even though she didn't want to. I meant no harm. I only wish to spend time with you. The most popular lady on the dating market hosts a party. All the men tried their best and even performed acrobatic stunts to win her heart as the most popular girl of the social season. Edwina is being courted by all sorts of men and her favorite sister, Kate, is keeping an eye out for them and the playboy. Viscount Anthony was shut out by Kate. Even though Edwina has a crush on Anthony, Kate is determined to keep them apart. So, she deliberately didn't tell Anthony about the talent show. But Anthony got the news and arrived at the last minute before the end of the show to get a chance to read Edwina a love poem. Kate, of course, tried to discourage him but couldn't resist the look of anticipation in her sister's eyes. So she agreed. Anthony, however, felt that the poem was too sappy for him to read. Truth be told, I'm not... <sighs> Not a man of poetry. The words of flattery are beautiful and sweet, but they are also hollow. Miss Edwina, I could stand here and pretend to be someone I am not. I could pretend to want the very same things as you, but I would be lying. I may not be able to offer the display of passion that you truly deserve, but I assure you that when it comes to action and duty. Apparently, his words had touched everyone in the room, especially Edwina, who was the object of his affection. After this night, she was sure that Anthony was a good man like her father, Kate who has been doing her best to prevent this from happening, is so upset that she leaves the party and accidentally bumps into the valet. Lady Danbury noticed Kate's mood and came into the room to comfort her. She was sure that Anthony was a nice guy, given her years of friendship with the Bridgerton family. She hoped that Kate would not be so judgmental as to allow Edwina to miss out on a possible happiness. And while it's Kate's responsibility to worry about her sister Edwina, she should be thinking about her own marriage. But Kate said that as long as her sister was happy, she'd rather be single, like Lady Danbury, and live her life that way. Because I have lived a life. I am a widow. I have loved. I have lost. I have earned the right to do whatever I please, whenever I please, and however I please to do it. Child, you are not me. And if you continue down this road, you most certainly never will be. Soon after, Edwina received an invitation from Viscount Anthony to join Lady Danbury on a residential vacation. Edwina is both nervous and expectant, for she knows that this is Anthony's test for her. He wants to see if Edwina is fit to be a Viscountess. Kate reminds Edwina that this is also a chance for her to see if Anthony is fit to be her husband. Duchess Stephanie returned to her mother's house with her lovely son, whom she hadn't seen for a long time. Anthony also urges his siblings to do their part to make his marriage work, especially Edwina's sister Kate, who is a difficult nut to crack. In a show of pomp and circumstance, the entire Bridgerton family came to the door to greet the visitors. This time, Anthony specifically walks up to Kate. By the end of your stay, your opinion of me will be much improved. girl lifts up her exquisite dress and walks into the mud puddle without hesitation, and the gentleman on the side is shocked by her behavior. After all, he has never seen a noble lady do such a thing. Kate, however, is more forthcoming, and after hitting a ball that has fallen into the mud, she challenges Anthony to a game. Your play, my lord? Unless you do not wish to dirty those fine boots. Not to be outdone, Anthony steps into the puddle and hits the ball, and then turns around and walks away in style. However, Kate, who is right behind him, realizes that she can't get her foot out of the puddle. Help! Just pull. I am trying to stuck. Anthony has no choice but to pull her out, but he loses his balance and they both fall into the mud together. Seeing each other's predicament, 
the incompatible foes couldn't help but laugh. Not long ago, Kate and her sister Edwina were invited to Anthony's ancestral home. Anthony's purpose was to win the favor of the diamond lady, Edwina, who was a perfect match to his requirements for a wife. His sister Daphne organizes a game of croquet for the two of them to bond. Sport has always been Kate's fort, and she, who has never approved of Anthony's advances towards her sister, decides to give him a good run for his money. The game began with a selection of clubs. Anthony was a gentleman and helped Edwina to take out her favorite clubs. But the next moment, Kate grabbed Anthony's favorite club. His siblings immediately teased that normally they would never be allowed to touch his favorite club. After all, Kate was a guest, so Anthony had to pretend to be generous and give up the club. During the game, Kate, who was good at sports, was the center of attraction, and Edwina, who was not good at the game, was also taken care of by Anthony. All of this was in Kate's eyes. The children are having a great time, and the mothers are happy to see that they will be in-laws in the near future. The game on the field is getting more and more intense, and Kate is completely energized. Edwina hopes her sister won't take it too seriously. It's just a game, but Kate, intent on winning, doesn't listen and quickly swings her and Anthony's ball into the woods. Anthony rolls his eyes and applauds her. Edwina, who had been outplayed by Kate, lost all interest in the game and was ready to go back to rest after her loss. Anthony noticed that she was depressed and wanted to accompany her, but Edwina didn't want to spoil the fun, so she refused Anthony's offer and left alone. Kate and Anthony went to the forest to retrieve their balls in order to continue the game. The two of them were then drawn closer together by a mud puddle. Oh, <laughs> I believe I underestimated you, Michelle. To be the theme of our acquaintance, does it not? Kate was ready to continue the game, so she swung her club hard and hit the ball under a tree in the distance. But then Anthony suddenly changed his attitude and turned away in anger. Kate went to the tree, but she didn't understand anything until she saw the tombstone. That forbidden place brought back sad memories for Anthony. As a boy, he grew up with his father by his side. He was a strong man, who set an example as a responsible father, and he loved his father with all his heart. Just that day, while returning home from a hunting trip, his father was trying to pick some flowers for his mother when he was stung by a bee. Anthony didn't care at first, but the next moment, his father started to lose his breath and collapsed into his arms. Anthony could never have imagined that a tiny bee would take the life of his beloved father. A bee landed on a woman's chest, but the man across from her was so nervous he couldn't breathe. She tries to repel the bee, but it stops her. As they tussle, Kate is stung by a bee, which causes Anthony to panic. Are you hurt? Can you breathe? It turns out that Anthony's father died suddenly from a bee sting, which left Anthony with an indelible psychological trauma. And that's why he's so worried. As he gets more and more nervous, Kate reassures him that she's fine, and then takes his hand and puts it on her chest to make sure it's all right. The two of them grew closer and closer together, and their eyes gradually began to look at each other differently, until a horse's neigh brought them back to their senses. According to Anthony's plan, he wanted to marry Kate's sister, Edwina. Edwina's beauty and gentleness feed his criteria for a wife. Since his father's death, Anthony inherited his father's title and took responsibility for the whole family. So his criteria for choosing a wife was that she would provide their children with a good upbringing and work with him to maintain the family's prosperity and reputation. After inviting Edwina to the ancestral home and having an in-depth conversation, Anthony became more and more convinced that she was the perfect Viscountess for the role and began to plan his proposal. His sister Daphne wants to help him too. She tells her brother that as long as he feels like he can't think or even breathe in front of Edwina, he can be sure that Edwina is the one, but at that moment, all Anthony could think of was another face. Torn in his heart, Anthony went to his father's grave the next day, hoping to get some guidance. His mother could see that he was struggling with the proposal, and Anthony always emphasized that he was responsible for the family's decision. Just because you are dedicated to this family does not mean that there should be no room left for love, Anthony. I seek an amiable partner with whom I may share a pleasant life, untouched by heartbreak and the ravages of grief. Anthony wanted a loveless marriage because he'd seen how much his mother had suffered after his father's death, and he thought he was being sensible by not wanting to make the same mistake. By the end of dinner, it was clear to everyone that Anthony was likely to propose to Edwina at this point. He stood up in anticipation and turned to face Edwina. It has certainly been a privilege to truly make your acquaintance these past days. In fact, I believe there is a question I would like to ask you. I should like to ask you to please refrain from telling anyone back in London about yesterday's loss. Anthony suddenly changed his mind and withdrew his proposal to Edwina, much to Edwina's dismay, while Kate, who was sitting in the corner, seemed to be relieved. 
Edwina doesn't know what it is about her that doesn't satisfy Anthony that makes him hesitate to propose, and Kate reassures her sister that there are plenty of other suitors for her, and she doesn't have to be upset about Anthony alone. Kate didn't realize that her sister had fallen in love with Anthony, and Edwina spent the night thinking about it, and finally found out why early the next morning. It's because of you. You hate one another. She thought that the reason Anthony had proposed was because he had a problem with her sister, and in a foolish attempt to make things right between the two of them, Edwina offered to let Kate go on a hunting trip with Anthony. The woman in her dapper hunting outfit lifts the hem of her skirt and walks right over the obstacle without the man's assistance. Kate has learned it from experience that prey is more likely to be found at the edge of the forest, and since a large group of people were now gathered together, even if the prey appeared, they would be scared off early, so she advised against following the guide blindly. Anthony did not pay attention to her words, but when he turned his head again, Kate was gone. When I found Kate again, she had already set up her rifle and was ready to take aim. Anthony accused her of taking the initiative and going off on her own, but he also knew that Kate had a history of not playing by the rules, otherwise she wouldn't have ridden out alone that morning, and she wouldn't have gotten stoned by AB, and she wouldn't have put them in the awkward situation they were in now. Exactly which difficult situation are you referring to, my lord? The other morning. When I was stunned. After which you put my hand to your bosom. Within a few moments they were arguing again, when there was a noise in the woods ahead of them, and Kate immediately set up a rifle to take aim at her prey. Anthony thinks she's not holding the gun right, and as he likes to be a teacher, he shows her how to do it. This time, the two of them are once again in close proximity to each other, and the atmosphere is once again ambiguous. Just when they were immersed in each other's breathing, the hunting troops suddenly came, and they immediately separated and pretended that nothing had happened. After returning from the hunt, Kate was still in a state of shock, but her sister was already in her room wondering if Kate was getting along with Anthony. Two of you finally warmed to one another. We did. Edwina hoped that if all went well, Anthony would propose to her at the ball tomorrow. But Kate's heart was full of mixed feelings at the moment. As the night wore on, the men and women were restless with thoughts of their own. In order to calm down her restlessness, Kate chooses to go to her study to read a book. Anthony, who sees the light, also comes to the study, and now the two of them are awkwardly sharing the same room once again. Kate found a book that her father used to read to her on many days. Anthony takes the book and says that it is also his father's book. As they talk, Kate learns that Anthony's father died of a bee sting, and she realizes why he was so nervous that day. Anthony reveals his vulnerability, and Kate feels sorry for him, and when their eyes meet, their feelings and desires begin to grow. Oh, this is not... It's alright. Bid you good night. Anthony is supposed to propose to the younger of the two sisters, but instead he spends uncontrollable amounts of time alone with the older sister and is deeply attracted to her. And your heart is with my sister. Tell me you feel nothing. Oh, I'm so sorry. At a recent ball, Anthony continues his pursuit of Edwina as planned. After two dances, Edwina decides to ask her sister Kate to have a third dance with Anthony to see if he is interested in proposing. She also hoped that Kate, who had hated Anthony before, would take this opportunity to give her blessing to get married, but apparently Edwina didn't realize that the atmosphere between the two of them was unusual. And as they danced to the lyrical music, they drew closer and closer together, as if they were a perfect match. Anthony is the first to break the silence by asking Kate if he can get her permission to propose to Edwina. Kate replied that she only wanted her sister to be happy. Can you make her happy? If your silence is an indication you are reconsidering your declaration, Is that Lord? what you want for me to reconsider? It is not utter what I want. Kate said she would return to India alone after her sister's happy marriage. Anthony, however, was not pleased with the news and left the ball in a rage. Kate immediately followed him to the study, wondering why Anthony was so angry. The truth was that Anthony was already in love with Kate. He didn't want Kate to leave and didn't understand why she hated him so much. You hate me. I do. I hate you. But Kate's feelings for him were more than just hate. The two of them were getting closer in a subtle way. It was only when Anthony's sister, Daphne, burst in that the behavior stopped. Anthony went out to explain to Daphne that what had just happened was because he thought Kate was too annoying. Daphne, as a married woman, already understands this, and it's clear that they both have feelings for each other, and this subtle emotion is love. She wanted her brother to be honest with his heart. So early the next morning, Anthony pulled out an heirloom ring and stopped Kate and her family as they were about to leave. 
Might I speak with you? Of course. I was meant for Miss Edwina. My lord? Anthony suddenly got down on one knee and asked Edwina to marry him. Will you marry me? Yes. Yes, yes! Expecting this, Edwina said yes without hesitation, but apparently the suddenness of the proposal confused some people in the know. There must have been love between Anthony and Kate, but it was the word that brought Anthony to his senses, because he had already made up his mind not to choose a marriage based on love, but to choose the right wife to run his family. News of Anthony's engagement to Edwina soon reached London, the union of the Viscount and the Lady of Diamonds was so celebrated that the Queen announced that she would organize the wedding herself. Nothing less for a true love match. My apologies, Your Majesty. The wedding is in a month's time, and the happy bride-to-be is choosing her dress. Kate arrives home early, only to meet the groom-to-be visiting her home. Anthony had brought a jeweler to Rasiza his heirloom wedding ring for Edwina. Since Edwina hadn't returned yet, they had to wait here for a while. Anthony wanted to break the awkward silence with a chat, but Kate couldn't resist asking him why he'd asked her sister to marry him. And if that was the case, then what had happened to them in the country? Anthony told her not to bring it up again or three people would be hurt. Just as they were about to get into another argument, the jeweler asked Kate if she usually used a pair of gloves with her sister. When he got an affirmative answer, the jeweler decided to ask Kate to help him try on the ring. They both wanted to say no, but that jeweler, who wanted to save time, wouldn't let them. So Anthony slipped his heirloom wedding ring onto Kate's ring finger, and now they were looking at each other with love in their eyes. It wasn't until the bride-to-be suddenly appeared that the two of them let go of each other's hands. Kate explains what's going on and then tries to pull out the ring. Kate, are you? Yes, almost. <sighs> just, uh, just another. <sighs> All yours. <sighs> Anthony held onto his fiancée's sister's hand and wouldn't let go. As she pulled her hand away from him, he fell into the lake uncontrollably. Standing on the shore, the two sisters couldn't help but laugh out loud at this scene. Anthony, who had been humiliated, immediately took off his soaked jacket to reveal his magnificent body which delighted Edwina. Kate reminded her that it was rude to stare at him like that, but she couldn't help but stare at him, because his body was too hot to be true. Just a few days ago, Anthony asked Edwina to marry him, but there was always an unspoken connection between him and Edwina's sister Kate. Lady Danbury recognized the unusual atmosphere between him and Kate, but she had to remind Kate that Anthony had proposed to her sister, and that the whole of society knew of their engagement. Only a fool would jeopardize the marriage now, so I ask you, are you that fool? No. Lady Danbury then introduced Kate to a male companion to take her canoe on the lake. The man helped Kate to board the boat, while Anthony stared solemnly at the scene. Looking at Kate's bright smile, he was completely jealous, ignoring the fact that his fiancée was still standing beside him. When Kate and the man came back, Anthony even took away the man's chance to be a gentleman and took the initiative to help Kate out of the boat. However, the two of them couldn't keep their hands off each other, and it soon fell into the water in a heap. At the official engagement dinner, bride-to-be Edwina's grandparents were invited, but since Edwina's mother refused their arranged marriage decades ago, in order to marry Kate's father, she's cut off all contact with them. As a result, the grandparents only saw Edwina as their granddaughter, and were not kind to their daughter, who had disobeyed them, and to Kate, who was not related to them by blood. At the dinner table, Grandma and Grandpa expressed their satisfaction with the marriage, but then they started to talk about how their daughter's disobedience in marrying an Indian had caused them to lose face in the aristocracy. And the grandparents were so arrogant, because they thought their daughter and granddaughter had to be obedient since they wanted their money. It turned out that Kate had secretly contacted her grandparents without her mother and sister's knowledge in the hope of securing a generous dowry for her sister, and the condition of the grandparents' agreement was that Edwina had to marry an Englishman of noble blood. As the truth is revealed, several people are embarrassed. Her mother and sister are clearly not happy, and Grandma continued to humiliate them. It was then that Anthony stepped forward to speak on their behalf. Since the moment you arrived, you have failed to show the proper respect for the Sharma family. Lady Mary has done admirably in raising her daughters. They are intelligent, kind, loyal women, and a credit to both their parents. And since you clearly do not wish to jeopardize your social standing by associating with such company. I suggest you do not. Anthony, as the host of the wedding, gave them a dismissal order so that they wouldn't have to wait for their wedding invitations. And the angry grandparents said that the sisters would not inherit a pain. The engagement party ended badly. Kate immediately went to Anthony to explain and hoped he wouldn't break the engagement over the dowry. Viscount Anthony doesn't care about the dowry.
but he does want to use it as an opportunity to break off an engagement that should never have begun. Because he knows he loves Kate, and marrying Edwina means he'll never have Kate, but he'll have to stay connected to her. He doesn't want to make all three of them suffer like this. But Edwina fell in love with Anthony tonight when she saw how he defended her and her family. I want nothing more than to be his wife, his Viscountess. And in order to make her sister happy, Kay finally decided to get out of this ridiculous relationship. She approached Anthony and asked him to keep his promise, saying that their deep-seated feelings would dissipate over time and it would be as if nothing had happened. Very well. I shall see that the wedding shall take place as soon as possible. The bridesmaid's bracelet fell on the ground. The groom immediately squatted down to help her pick it up and then tenderly put it into the bridesmaid's hand. The bride also saw the two of them gazing at each other with deep affection and realized that their relationship was not ordinary. She couldn't accept this fact and fled the wedding site. Kate and Anthony were frowning in surprise. Kate chose to give up Anthony in order to fulfill her sister's desire for happiness. After Kate's plea, Anthony was convinced to continue his engagement with Edwina. Edwina, who knew nothing of this, was still basking in the joy of her impending marriage to Anthony. Soon enough, the wedding was on schedule, and then he stood in the center of the church in his handsome outfit. However, it was Kate, a bridesmaid, who was walking slowly towards him first. The two of them look at each other in unison, and then turn their heads the moment their eyes meet. The wedding was brought to a climax, with the entrance of the most beautiful bride, accompanied by her mother. But as the bishop led the bride and groom in their vows, Anthony's attention was drawn to Kate. He even imagined Kate to be his bride. The bishop then woke up Anthony, and Kate, who was standing nervously, broke her bracelet, and that's when the bride found out what was going on between them. She fled the church, unable to cope with the shock. Back in her room, Edwina tried to calm down. Edwina yelled at her sister, Kate, and hoped Kate would tell her the truth. Do you love him? You told me you hated him. Do you love him? Obviously, Kate couldn't answer that question. To calm Edwina down, her mother had to ask Kate to leave the room. Anthony then approached Edwina and told her, that he was willing to go ahead with the wedding, no matter what her reasons were for running away. Because you love me. I understand you. I sympathize with you. In a certain light, I am you. With this answer, Edwina, even if she was, nay, knew that there was no need for the wedding to continue. The bride realizes that her groom and her sister are looking at each other, with ambiguity at the wedding site, and then ends up in this ridiculous wedding. She hates both of them for hiding and betraying her, and she hates them for holding back as if they were trying to make her happy. So Edwina broke off her engagement to Anthony. You cannot provide me with what it is that I want, what it is that I deserve, what everyone deserves. Her half-sister, Kate, has been making what she thinks are sacrifices and kidnapping her in the name of love. Today, you have lost your power. Edwina chooses to walk away from this three-person stalemate in style, and the other two, who are torn between their emotions, finally start to look at their hearts. They only wish that time could be stopped, so that they wouldn't have to deal with the mess. But the reality is still cruel. The news that Viscount Anthony and Edwina had broken off their engagement still shook high society, and all kinds of rumors and speculations ensued, and the two families were clearly ostracized in public. After all, in those days, nobles valued their reputation and face more than their lives. Both the Bridgerton and Sharma families were in a very awkward position. In order to change the situation, the two families had to put aside their differences and sit down together to discuss what to do. The mother suggested a ball or a public appearance to show that there was no scandal or bad blood between the two families. This way, others might be able to believe that the engagement was annulled under normal circumstances. Edwina, who was still upset, also suggested that a ball might be useful. After all, Anthony and his sister are very good at acting, so they will be able to convince people with their excellent acting skills. The two of them can't argue with Edwina's cynicism, but they can't hide their feelings any longer. Was I truly that blind? Were they always this obvious? Lady Danbury can't stand it any longer and forces them apart, telling them to keep their distance until the rumors die down, if they don't want to ruin everything. If the rumors of their affair were to be discovered and caught, the two families would be caught in the middle of a scandal. For the greater good, Anthony and Kate agreed to keep their love in check for the time being. So Lady Danbury arranged for them to attend an exhibition together today. Anthony is a gentleman and presents each lady with flowers, but Edwina rolls her eyes at him and hands them to a servant. The mothers again remind everyone to behave harmoniously. However, when Kate passes Anthony, he disregards protocol and begins to savor the scent she left behind. 
and then the entrance of the Bridgerton and Sharma families in harmony really caught everyone's attention. It was a beautifully executed performance that convinced everyone that the interruption of the wedding was a peaceful decision by the two families and not due to the rumored scandals. But Edwina still hasn't gotten over the huge deception. Even though Kate has been apologizing to her all the time in the past few days, there are some damages that can't be repaired. Anthony snuck up on Kate as soon as he saw her alone. Kate, who had been forgiven by her sister, was too ashamed to continue her relationship with Anthony. Nothing happened between us. Are you quite serious? We did a terrible thing. We should be ashamed of what we did. A gentleman and a lady can't resist the hormonal attraction and finally kiss. I will stop. Do not stop. I will stop. Do not stop. After a night's sleep with Anthony, Kate returned home still feeling hot from the previous night's events, so she galloped her horse through the rainstorm to clear her head. On the other hand, Anthony had just woken up from his sweet dream when he realized that Kate had disappeared, but after last night's intimacy, he was determined to marry Kate, just as he took out his ancestral wedding ring and was about to propose to Kate. He found out from the servants that Kate had gone out for a ride. Anthony immediately rode out to look for Kate and found her in the pouring rain. Due to the heavy rain, Kate did not hear Anthony's shouts. Just then the grassy area where they first met appeared ahead. Kate tried to pull up the reins to get over the obstacle, but due to the slippery conditions, the horse suddenly stopped in front of the obstacle, and Kate fell right off her horse. Anthony immediately jumped off his horse and ran towards her, but Kate had suffered a severe blow to the head and was already unconscious with blood ouncing out. Anthony immediately took Kate home and was so agitated that he told the doctor to hurry up and treat her until the doctor scolded him and then he calmed down. Seeing his beloved woman in danger, Anthony was in deep remorse. Edwina, however, is not concerned about her sister's betrayal and only wants her sister to wake up as soon as possible. Edwina stood by Kate's bedside every day, begging her not to leave her like this. After four days in a coma, Kate finally woke up. Edwina immediately called the rest of the family and shared with Kate the events of the past few days. When Kate realized that Anthony had come to visit her even once during her coma days, she was a bit disappointed. On the other hand, Anthony had been paralyzing himself with his heavy workload. The trauma of his father's death in front of his eyes hadn't dissipated yet, and now he couldn't get over it as he watched his beloved get hurt again. Seeing Anthony's sadness, his mother felt very sorry for him, and hoped that he could be more courageous and not to regret the loss of everything. His mother said that it was worth going through paying for true love. Encouraged by his mother, Anthony finally makes up his mind to come and visit Kate and decides to continue what he was planning to do the day after he had sex with her. But the moment he pulls out the ring, Kate stops him. Kate thinks that the night was just an impulse, and that she has not been forgiven by her sister, so she can accept Anthony's proposal. Realizing Kate's firm refusal, Anthony had no choice but to leave. Kate then went to her sister's room to apologize to Edwina again and hoped that Edwina could forgive her for her deception. And after seeing Kate's full recovery, Edwina did want to have an open and honest conversation with her. Edwina wanted to know if her sister had been cheating on her from the beginning. Kate was finally willing to face her feelings and admit that maybe she had been lying to herself all along. When she realizes she has feelings for Anthony, it's too late. She didn't tell Edwina because she thought she could control her feelings. Kate, I am done with playing a part. Whatever action you now wish to take, I only hope it is because you are being truthful to yourself of anyone else. The controversial sisters arrive at the ball and are met with strange looks from the crowd. Even when no man asks them to dance, they decide to take to the dance floor on their own, no longer bound by the rules or the scrutiny of others. The two sisters were once at odds over a man, but after some honesty and openness, Edwina chose to forgive her sister for her deception. She wants her to be brave enough to pursue her own happiness. You have spent so much of your time shining your light on me. It is time for you to shine all on your own. And then he saw Kate and came over to say hello. He thought Kate would still reject him after his earlier failed proposal. But then Kate reached out to him and asked him to dance. When the onlookers saw this scene, they immediately thought that there might be a hidden agenda to break off the engagement between the two families. Do you want to stop? Just keep looking at me. The queen smiled as she realized what was going on. She has always insisted on the primacy of true love, and she will not allow it to be denigrated. Edwina also came out to say that they were perfect for each other. Beautiful indeed. Do they not? Do they not? Oh, yes, yes, yes. 
Edwina's generosity and understanding attracted the queen's attention, and she planned to introduce Edwina to her nephew. A heartfelt dance wasn't enough for the slow Anthony to read Kate's mind. So, he finds Kate standing alone in the garden after the dance, and reveals his feelings to her for the first time. I want a life that suits us both. I know I am imperfect, but I will humble myself before you because I cannot imagine my life without you and that is why I wish to marry you. You do know there will never be a day where you do not vex me. Their pretentious love was finally consummated beneath the splendor of fireworks. After a six-month honeymoon, the Bridgerton family reunited at the ancestral home for some quality family time in the wide open meadow. While Anthony's sister couldn't help but complain that a certain newlywed couple was now taking six hours to get down the stairs. Here they are. Here. <laughs> Not a moment too soon. <laughs> and there they were, the newlyweds, stuck together and unwilling to part with their loved ones. The siblings wanted to play croquet together, but Anthony and Kate were showing off their love for each other regardless of the occasion. The Bridgertons, used to this intimate scene, had no choice but to leave the field for the two of them to enjoy themselves.